Okay, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Shua coming at you with a review of the Algebra 2 SOL from the previous year. What you have before me here is the Virginia Department of Education, the released SOL for spring 2014. Some of these you may have went over with your teacher or some of the questions here, you may have looked at the answers in the back, but you really still don't understand how to answer these questions. What I'm about to do is go through each and every question on this 2014 Algebra 2 SOL to show you a way that you can answer these questions. If you study this, hopefully the next time you take the Algebra 2 or any of the SOLs, you should be familiar with how to answer these questions. So anyway, let's get rolling here. So let me scroll down here. So we have our formula sheet. Now, if you have a paper test, you'll have a paper formula sheet just like this one. If you're taking the online test, you'll basically click and pull down the formula sheet which you need. You're gonna need the formula sheet to answer some of the questions. All right, so <clears throat> let's start with sample A. It says, which expression is equivalent to the square root of seven X over 16? Well, you could take the square root of 7x over 16 and you could split it into two like this. The square root of 7x over the square root of 16. The square root of 7x, so you can't simplify it anymore, so you leave it as it is. The square root of 16 is 4, so the correct answer would be C, the square root of 7x over 4. Okay, let's go on. Sample B. What value of x makes the square root of x minus 3 equals 6 true? Well, if we write down the square root of x minus 3 equals 6, if we add 3 to both sides, we would get the square root of x equals 9. And to get rid of the radical here, which is a square root, we square both sides. So the square root of x squared is just x. The square root of 9 is 81, so x equals 81. And if we plug 81 in, let's see, the square root of 81 is 9. 9 minus 3 is 6. So this is true. Okay, so that's it for the sample questions. Let's go on to the main questions here. All right, so let's see. Question 1. Which expression is equivalent to 3n over n plus 3 plus 5 over n minus 4 if no denominator equals 0? Well, a way you could answer a question like this is right now they have different denominators, n plus 3 and n minus 4. In order to add or subtract any fractions, the denominators must match. So with that being the case, if I were to multiply this first fraction by 1, n minus 4 over n minus 4, and then I were to multiply the second fraction by 1, n plus 3 over n plus 3. We'll see in both cases our denominator will be n plus 3 times n minus 4. Then in our numerator I would just simply multiply here. 3n times n gives me 3n squared. 3n times negative 4 gives me a negative 12n. 5 times n gives me a positive 5n. 5 times 3 gives me a positive 15. So that's my numerator. Then I just combine my like terms. When I combine my like terms, I'll get 3n squared minus 7n plus 15 over my new denominator of n plus 3n minus 4. Now, when we look at our answer choices, choice B matches what we have here. Make sense? Okay, if that didn't make sense, just look through the steps again. This one should become intuitive to you. That's question one. Let's go on to question two. Which number is equivalent to negative 6 minus i plus 5i minus 11 plus 13i? I'm going to save time, and I'm just simply going to plug this into the calculator. Now, in order to make sure that you can see imaginary roots on your calculator, what you want to do is hit your mode key. You want to scroll down 
until you get to stat diagnostics and make sure that stat diagnostics is on here actually this isn't for imaginary actually for imaginary we want to go back here with the real a plus b i we want to make sure that that's on a plus b i that allows us to see imaginary numbers the stat diagnostics is actually going to be for our regression which we'll need anyway so i just said it early all right so let me quit out of there and let me clear this now what i will do is just type in negative six minus i to get i i hit second period that gives me an i close parentheses plus five i <clears throat> minus open parentheses 11 plus 13 i now, your teacher may have taught you to go about it uh, by hand, which is okay. I'm just showing you a faster way how to do it. If you simply punch in everything just the way it is there, you can get your answer. And our answer is negative 17 minus 9i, which is choice A. Okay? Let us move on. Now, which of the following is the factored form of x cubed minus 216? Well, x cubed is a cube. 216 is also a cube. So this is what we call a difference of cubes. The way that we factor differences of cubes, they factor to be a binomial and a trinomial. The way that we get our binomial, we take the cubed root of x cubed, which is simply x. We take the cubed root of 216, which is 6, since there's a minus sign here, there's a minus sign here. When we factor them, all of these will be pluses. And then I just take whatever this is and square it. This is x, so this part will be x squared. My middle term will be this times this, which is just plus 6x. And my last term will be my last term squared. 6 squared is 36. So we get x minus 6 times x squared plus 6x plus 36. If you were to multiply these two by themselves, you would get this back. And as we look at our option choices, choice D is the choice which makes sense. Okay, let us move on. Okay, now question four. Which expression is equivalent to the square root of 75x cubed minus the square root of 27x cubed if x is greater than zero. Okay, so we need to know how to simplify radicals in order to answer this question. I'm going to start with the square root of 75x squared. I will break this down into two simpler radicals. I'd find two numbers that multiply to 75 and one of the numbers is a perfect square. In this case, 25 and 3 because 25 is a perfect square and 25 times 3 is 75. So I would take the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, which is my square root of 75 portion. Now x cubed is not a perfect square, but I can take two of those x's, x squared, that's a perfect square. The remaining x I can place under my other radical. So what I have is the square root of 25x squared times the square root of 3x. And I can simplify the square root of 25x squared as the square root of 25 is 5, square root of x squared is x. So that's just 5x, square root 3x. Now let's do the square root of 27x cubed. Again, splitting into two radicals, one of them being a perfect square, one not. I can break down 27 as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. And again, x cubed as the square root of x squared times the square root of x. Then I take the square root of 9x squared, the square root of 9 is 3, square root of x squared is x, so I get 3x, the square root of 3x. So now I have 5x, the square root of 3x, minus 2x, excuse me, minus 3x, the square root of 3x. And my answer, 2x, square root of 3x, which is option D. All right, let's go on to question 5. 
assuming that no denominator equals zero, which is equivalent to r squared minus r minus six over r minus two, r minus three. I believe this is uh, unit six, rational expressions. And what you need to do to answer this question is the numerator, r squared minus r minus six, you need to be able to break that down into two separate radicals and r squared minus r minus six, factoring it works out to be r plus two times r minus three. So our numerator factors to be r plus two, r minus three. We look at our denominator of r minus two, r minus three. We see in the numerator and denominator, we both have an r minus three, so we can scratch those out. And what we're left with is simply r plus two over r minus two, which is our answer, which is answer A. All right. Let's go on here. Right, let's see our next question. Which expression is equivalent to the fourth root of 16 x to the 15th, y to the 17th, where x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero? With Whenever you see this, when x is greater than zero, y greater, like on several of these questions, they're just letting you know there's no negative integers, there's no zeros that you have to worry about. You're just worried about re just regular integers, regular numbers. Okay, so I'm going to break this down. If I take the fourth root of 16 x to the 15th, y to the 17th, and convert it from radical form to exponential form, I'd have 16 to the 1 fourth, x to the 15 fourths, y to the 17 fourths. 16 to the 1 fourth can be simplified as just 2. And then x to the 15 fourth, y to the 17 fourth, we can leave them as is. And look, that's question or answer D. Okay, this is simplifying radicals. I believe this is unit five from algebra two. Okay, let's move on to question seven. Which is equivalent to six plus radical seven times five plus radical seven? Well, that's a binomial and a binomial. We can just FOIL this really easy, okay? 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times radical 7 is a positive 6 radical 7. Radical 7 times 5 is a positive 5 radical 7. Radical 7 times radical 7 is just 7. So if we combine like terms, 30 and 7 is 37. 6 radical 7 plus 5 radical 7 is 11 radical 7, which is choice D. That one was pretty easy, okay? Let's move on. Question 8. All right. Simplify completely. See, well, there's a lot of simplifying on this uh, SOL here. Q root of 162, x to the 6th, y to the 7th. And this is one of the fill-ins here. All right. So what I would do, like I did here, the Q root of 162, x to the 6th, y to the 7th, I will break it down into two radicals. Everything that's a perfect cube, I'm going to place under my first radical. Everything not a perfect cube, I'm going to place under my second radical. Q root of 162. I would break that down. Two numbers that multiply to 162, one's a perfect cube, 27 and 6. Because 27 times 6 is 162, 27 is a perfect square. X to the 6th is, a, excuse me, perfect cube. X to the 6th is a perfect cube. I would place it here. Y to the 7th is not a perfect cube, but Y to the 6th is. I'd place my remaining Y here. Now I can just simplify my first radical. Q root of 27 is 3. Q root of x to the 6 is x to the 6 over 3, or just x squared, y squared. And then we just bring down our cube root of 6y. So what we will place in these boxes is 3x squared, y squared, the cube root of 6y. And we're done with that question. All right, let's go on to number 9 here. Which expression is equivalent to x to the 3 7 y to the 36 sevenths. All right. So, x to the 3 sevenths 
and y to the 36 steps, they both have a denominator of 7, right? Now, let's look at the y to the 36 sevenths for a moment. Couldn't I break that down as y to the 35 sevenths times y to the 1 seventh? Because 35 sevenths, because 7 is a factor of 35, and that would just be 5 y to the fifth times y to the seventh. So I could actually pull out a y to the fifth here. Um, I hope some of you did, didn't miss that here. y to the 36 sevenths. Again, I broke it down as y to the 35 sevenths times y to the one sevenths. The 35 sevenths, I can simplify that to be five times one seventh. So I can pull out a y to the fifth. So I'm extract that out to the side. If I do that, then I would simply have the x to the 3 sevenths and the y to the 1 seventh, pulling out the y to the fifth. And if I make my 7, my radical, when I convert from exponential back to radical, this would be the seventh root of x cubed y. So y to the fifth the seventh root of x cubed y. Again, they have the same denominator, so I can just switch them back to radical. Choice C is our answer, okay? That was number nine, let's do 10 here. It says, factor the following polynomial, 8x squared minus 18xy minus 5y squared. Now, different teachers teach their students different ways to factor. I'm going to teach you, well, what I think is a, a quick way of factoring. Whenever you have any trinomial and the coefficient is greater than 1, in this case, it's 8. I would take the polynomial here. Now, the first two portions, right here and here, of your two binomials are going to be factors of this 8x squared. So I would list factors of 8x squared on the side. I have 8x and x, and I have 4x and 2x. And then I, here, this portion and this portion, the last two numbers here, are going to be factors of that 5y squared, the negative 5y squared. So then I would just place factors of that 5y squared or whatever that last term is on the side, and that's just 5y and y. So, just looking at these numbers, see, I, I chose 4x and 2x as the first two numbers as factors of the 8x squared, and then the positive one, it's either going to be a positive 1, negative 5, or it's going to be a positive 5, negative 1. I chose the positive 1, negative 5, then all I need to do is foil it to see if it actually works. 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 4x times negative 5y is a negative 20xy. y times 2xy is a positive 2xy. Negative 20xy plus 2xy is a negative 18xy in the middle. And then y, uh, y times negative 5y is a negative 5y squared. So this factoring actually works out. And then if I circle 2x minus 5y right here, 4x plus y, which is here. Okay, so this is the 10th question. I'm going to stop this here because these videos can get pretty long. What I'm going to do is questions 11 through 20, I'm going to do in the next video. Okay, so I'll see you guys on the other side.